Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Cynic Alex. And today I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek at Jean Grey World Boss Legend. Now I'm not ready just yet to make a guide video on this content, and I know for a lot of players it's still in the distance as far as unlocking it goes. I did bite the bullet, spend the 5,000 crystals and unlock it because I like pushing myself, I like seeing how difficult new content is, and I also needed to get a sneak peek at the rewards, which you will also see in this video, so that we can continue to harass the devs about the balancing of rewards in World Boss Legend, because that's really one of the hot topics nowadays, uh, and it has been since Tier 4s basically were introduced, uh, because the devs mentioned, remember, in their dev note uh, back in April or, or in March of this year, that they were going to change the world boss legends and make the rewards very clearly better um, from stage to stage. And unfortunately, that is not the case here. But anyways, rewards aside, let's check out the first run here. We have Iron Man with Doctor Strange lead and Thing support. A lot of people ask me why I use Thing in any video. Um, I'm using Thing here in this run because he has a CTP of Insight. He doesn't give any buffs to... Um, I don't believe he gives any buffs uh, that are relevant to my damage here uh, but he does have the ctp of insight which is the buff that i'm looking for um, and the requirement for those of you wondering is human male so i cannot use any aliens i cannot use any inhumans or any mutants here um, from stage 15 up to stage 19 uh, and you'll see in the next clear who you actually need for stage 19 to push ahead to stage 20 but for now let's just focus here we got the mini game uh, that happens once you get gene down to 30 bars so this is an unavoidable mini game no matter how much damage you deal you will always be interrupted because she goes into an iframe and you have this cutscene, and then you have to do this mini game this mini game is actually really fun in my opinion uh you have a little bar uh and you it, so it sort of it sort of looks like and it reminds me of the danger room bar where you're trying to lower it faster than your opponent is lowering it because you have the two hp bars for the two bosses simultaneously so there's a nice sort of nod to that old game mode and of course this is the old danger room location um and this is also the old danger room music so lots of nods to that old content i, I do really appreciate that on, on behalf of the devs um and then um as far as you know you just want to keep that x the, the little x icon in the middle where that blue uh part of the bar is the, the sort of light blue there's like a dark blue and a dark red you'll see it again so don't worry if you missed it um but to comment a little bit on this run here i didn't play very well with iron man to be honest i know iron man fanatics are going to look at my rotation and be like what's going on i was doing multiple different rotations i'm not exactly sure yet what works best against gene um i also don't know like what my windows are for damage in certain scenarios i'm still learning the patterns of the fight this is a really cool pattern that you always have to deal with again no matter how much damage you deal um and so that's why my iron man run is bad because i'm, I'm looking for different windows uh to do damage and seeing how much damage i can do because the the worst part or the most difficult part about Jean gray world boss legend is the damage that she deals and you can see there that took my entire tier 4 shield and it actually ate into my hp with a single hit so her dam her hits and her damage ranges from you know 60 percent of your hp to 100 percent of your hp so it's very very uh scary to get hit by her which is why you cannot sit there doing perfect rotation after perfect rotation because one you know if you just linger in the wrong place for one extra second you get absolutely blown up to bits uh, and there's basically no character I found um, other than a character that has, like, the I immortal artifact uh, or has a revive that can actually tank any of her hits. But we get this done run. We get this run done pretty well. I think it could have been faster. Um, I don't know if Iron Man uh, doesn't have any bonus damage against her. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But as you can see, the rewards are the same. The same as doing Stage 1. The same as doing Stage 1 Ultron or Stage 1 uh, Gore. So why bother, right? Why bother at all? Unless you just want the... The stage itself is really cool, yeah, and fighting against Gene is really cool. Yes, that, that part is, is quite cool. All right, this next run here, we're using Venom with uh, Toxin and Carnage. Uh, for those of you that were very eagle-eyed, oh, right, I died here. That's right, okay, I left this in the video, so we'll just, we'll just keep, we'll just keep uh, recording here. For those of you that are eagle-eyed, well, that shows you there how much damage she deals. She popped my Venom from 100% down to zero in one shot. Uh, that attack with those four purple circles that that track you down is very lethal. You have to you either have to switch, run, or you have to use the co-op skill. And you'll see me use the co-op skill here in a second to um, to avoid it because I know that it's coming. But um, the reason why I'm not using anti venom with this clear, I know a lot of people are asking. Here's the four pillars, and I'm going to use the co-op skill now, and it of course protects you. Very important. 
that works for almost any character besides Namor, so just keep that in mind. You can use the co-op skill, and you should use the co-op skill as sort of like an emergency button here. I had to be very, very careful. I almost died, but yeah, her damage is nuts. But yeah, I'm not using Agent Venom. Sorry, let me finish my sentence here. I'm not using Agent Venom because I accidentally used him as a striker for the Iron Man team. Yeah, very disappointing. It was just a mental error. Um, I'm, I'm keeping such close eye. I'm keeping such a close eye and it's keeping such track on Jean Grey to make sure that I use her as a striker to get her potential that I completely forgot about Agent Venom um, and the leadership that I needed him for here. I'm still getting used to this. This is only like the fourth day that I've been playing Jean. Um, so it's definitely something that's still, uh, or third day, uh, it's still something that takes uh, getting used to. But yeah, here we go with the next phase. And obviously, movement speed is super important for this little mini game. Also, staying as far away from Jean as possible is very important, specifically for that fireball phase. She almost always does the fireball phase. Sometimes she does it twice. And so being as far away from her as possible to get more time to dodge those fireballs is very, very key. Now, one weird thing that I noticed, um, and again, we're going to have to do a lot more testing to figure out what is going on. But I noticed that Venom felt like he was doing more damage than Iron Man was. Now, this could be because of that un you know, unfixed, unresolved bug where certain characters' damage is not being calculated properly. Um, that could be affecting Iron Man and not affecting uh, Venom. That's absolutely possible. However, if it's not affecting either of them, uh, then there may be something else going on entirely. And some people have already speculated that maybe Jean uh, takes less damage from non-human enemies, or maybe she takes less damage, or she takes uh, more damage from elemental attacks, or maybe she takes more damage from mutants. I'm not exactly sure, um, but it is something to keep an eye on because just the way the run felt, um, despite the fact that I don't have an inside CTP, so actually um, Venom has less buffs than Iron Man had, um, and they both have the same, basically the exact same builds, you know, Mighty CTP of Rage, you know, four-star artifact. Actually, Venom is a three-star artifact. But uh, yeah, basically the same build, but uh, Venom definitely felt a lot stronger. Now, you'll see here at 13 bars, she always stops taking damage. I mentioned it in a video previously, but she has an invincibility bubble that pops up at the bottom of 13 bars. So no matter what, you will always have to deal with this cutscene as well. So you're going to have minimum of two cutscenes, even if you're doing the most amount of damage possible. You're going to have a cutscene at 31 or 30 bars, and then you're going to have another cutscene at 13, where she will always do this sort of, I call this the nuclear bomb, uh, legalized nuclear bombs uh, portion of the fight, because that, uh, that those three... You know, it looks like the, the sign for uh, sort of hazardous materials, biohazard kind of thing. Here, we just use the co-op skill uh, correctly. If you notice above her HP bar, she stacks damage reduction, uh, and it goes up to two stacks. I'm not exactly sure how to get rid of the stacks, but um, in the last phase of the fight, she starts doing this really toxic rotation where she goes to the center, she does these five dive bombs, and then she does that four, uh, those four that track you down. And then she does this sort of, uh, it's sort of like a gore teleportation type of thing. Here I made a mistake and I popped the tier three too far away so I couldn't cancel it. But honestly, it still had pretty good damage. Um, but we're just trying to get her down. I'm just desperate at this point to kill her. She's going back into the middle to do some, some rotation, some animation. But I just popped everything uh, to try and finish it. And we did get it done with a minute to spare. Very good stuff, but also surprisingly difficult and um, not very impressive rewards to, to show for our effort. On to run number three. And this run I was actually a little worried about. I gave the support to Moon Knight because he doesn't have a rage. He has a mighty energy. And the testing that we've done versus Ultron and Gore has sort of indicated that rage is better than energy, especially at higher stages. I wanted to see if he could tank this, and he could. Um, actually, did he, did he tank it? I can't remember. But yeah, we're using two fire resist strikers. So if you notice there, we're using both Human Torch and Molten Man to get 40% fire resistance. I think that's a big reason why he was able to tank that ability. Um, Moon Knight has very low defense, and so he, he, he does yo-yo his HP a lot. He has a lot of healing, but you have to be able to tank the hit in order to heal it back up. So that was sort of my worry, and that's why I gave him fire resist strikers. But yeah, I was also worried that he wouldn't do enough damage or that his damage would be, you know, reduced because he doesn't have a rage as an energy. So that's why I saved Taskmaster for him. I could have used Taskmaster with Iron Man or with um, Venom, although I was supposed to use Agent Venom with Venom. 
but you can see here, uh, normally those those just one of those circles hits for at least 50% of his HP. It's absolutely bonkers how much damage gets done. But on the plus side, I was actually surprised. Uh, Moon Knight did a really good job. Again, it could be because he's one of the characters that's not affected by this bug, or maybe he is. Like Again, we don't know exactly what's going on, um, but uh, I was impressed with his damage. Yeah, despite the fact that he has a CTP of energy, I was very impressed with his damage, and um, he certainly is useful for this game mode, uh, for this for this fight in particular, not only because he has you know a, a very nice, easy proc rotation, but he also gets through his animations very quickly, unless you're lingering on the sixth skill. And the importance of getting through your animations quickly is that so you can see what Gene is doing, one, and then you can run away if you need to, right? Characters that are stuck in their animations for a really long time, even if you can see what Gene is doing, uh, you can't run away. And in, in order to interrupt yourself, you're either going to have to switch characters or you're going to have to use a different skill, and then that can hamper your damage. So it is very important to highlight characters like this who have good movement speed, good survivability, but that also have really fast animations. If you can pack a ton of damage into uh, you know, a smaller time frame, a smaller window of time, that's always beneficial because then it gives you more time to dodge, more time to reposition yourself, uh, do these mechanics, uh, and then get right back into the fight proccing. So, yeah, I was pretty happy with Moon Knight. Definitely a surprise there. Um, I should have popped the... Uh, well, I could have popped the tier, the, the Transcendent skill, but I wanted to make sure that I had the... Um, I had the, uh, the, the tier 4 skill up as well. Here, we're going to have to pop the co-op skill because I'm scared that he's going to get one-shotted, and he probably would have. She seems to do more damage as the fight progresses, so I don't want to find out how much more damage that is and have to redo the whole run. Um, but yeah, here's the five uh, Phoenix drop where they all drop from the sky. And then at the same time, when those five are over, there's four there um, chasing you. And then she does these sort of, so I, I, I called it a gore teleportation, but it's more like Ultron's teleportation when he's using the blue stone, the time stone, and he's, um, or the, sorry, the space stone, and he's teleporting around and slashing you. That's what, uh, that's what her skill looks, that's what her skill feels like. And she only does that at the end of the fight. Uh, and it's a very scary skill because, they, like I said, it can one-shot you there. I just did the same thing as Venom. We just tried to gun it right to the finish line. Didn't want to extend the fight. It's really a matter of, like, doing damage but also finishing the fight quickly because otherwise it's, it's a nightmare. Here I skipped stage 19 and, and uh, unlocked 20. And the requirement for 20 or the, the requirements to get to 20 is you have to use Toxin five times. It's always on that previous team with Venom. And then the, um, the the restriction for 20 to 24 is just universal. So really good news for both Black Bolt and Thor. I think they could both excel very well on this stage. Black Bolt does have a, a few more supports because he has both Morgan Le Fay and, um, and Medusa, whereas Thor doesn't have nearly as much. He has like Hyperion, Black, um, he has Hyperion and a Beta Ray Bill, but he doesn't have access to Valkyrie or Sif or any of these other um, good supports because none of them are universal. So yeah, Black Bolt seems to be the de facto number one for just completely obliterating the stage. And that's probably who I'm going to climb with up to 25 to see what's the next requirement. Um, but yeah, he does he does an insane job. He's very squishy. Uh, we've, we've talked about this before in GBR and stuff, and it's no, no different here against Gene. So there are a couple of times where I actually have to interrupt his tier three with the co-op skill. And I lose damage, but if I don't do that, I would have died. But as you can see, he's absolutely blitzing this stage. And that's kind of what you expect from tier fours, right? I could have squeezed in some more damage here. I just didn't uh, prepare the damage properly. Like, I didn't combo well. But uh, this is what you sort of expect to see from tier fours. They should be dominating the content. If this was too difficult for him with double supports, it would be very scary. And it would be more along the lines of how Null felt for us two years ago when he was first introduced, where... You know, even the best players with the most stacked accounts could barely deal, could barely scratch him um, in in the low to mid 20s. We got a little screenshot there to show off, but again, rewards not that impressive. Jean Grey, I get eight percent on her potential. They really have to do something about these rewards, man. It hurts me because I think a lot of players want to play this content, but they just have no incentive to do so. And the incentive of it's cool and it looks like it looks cool and it's fun. That's a decent incentive, but it's not really enough. Like, I don't blame players for not playing this content. 
uh, given how difficult it is to unlock if you're just going to get the same rewards as everywhere else, right? The only advantage here is the Phoenix Feathers and the Imkron Crystals. So I do really hope the devs make good on their promise to actually um, buff the rewards and rebalance them. Like, like, like I've said this before, I know some people don't like it, but even if Null gave a little bit less Carbonadium and a little bit less, um, uh, you know, um, Seed of Life Seed, and whatever and then uh mephisto gave the same amount that he's giving now and then ultron gave a little bit more gore gave a lot more and then uh, uh phoenix gave a lot more that would make sense right or maybe phoenix is the only one that drops soul of the foul team whatever the case may be um i think they sort of need to rebalance it because the way it is now uh it just doesn't really make sense last run here we went back down to stage 14 because i didn't want to try with thor and i wanted to show you guys how insanely good storm is for this now, I want to submit this into the speculation tab of things. Uh, one, I wanted to test myself. Uh, sorry, as far as the speculation goes, does Gene take more damage from elemental characters or does Gene take more damage from mutants or both? We don't know. But uh, Storm does an amazing job here at level 80 tier 3. I want you to pay attention to that and keep that in mind. She does have a brilliant Rage CTP equipped. I know that does count for a lot, but still. Level 80 tier 3 is huge, uh, and the damage drop-off for regular uh, tier 3s is is insane. They can they barely do a scratch in the second phase. So the fact that Storm is crushing this is pretty telling. But more importantly, I wanted to test myself to see if Storm was fast enough to do all of the uh, patterns and the attacks for Jean Grey's World Boss Legend. And I'm happy to say, I'm happy to report that it seems that she can. I do think you need to play a little bit defensively. You need to watch your HP bar especially when you're in the tier three animation because you can't see anything. So you have to watch the, the, the HP bar. And as soon as you start to lose health, you have to just mash the, uh, the co-op skill or the switch button to get her out of there because she can get you know completely melted. But as far as her movement speed goes, I think she does have enough movement speed to get out of the way and to, um, you know, and to, to clear this. Still, still able to get one-shotted, but the thing is almost any character gets one-shotted versus Gene. So it kind of neutralizes the disadvantage that storm had uh but the biggest disadvantage of all is that the rewards are still the same so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of that little sneak peek there number one for the world boss challenge records for now thank you so much for watching hit me up in the next video and i'll see you you'll hit me up i'll see you same thing in the next one take care